I don't, we have never seen a bail on this scale before, but this pattern has repeated over and over again. And in the shock doctrine, I talk about the very first laboratory for this phase of capitalism, which was Chile under, under Augusto Pinochet, the first country where they tried to put the ideas of Milton Friedman and Friedrich von Hayek into practice in the real world. Um, and they did this and they created a bubble uh, you know, in Santiago while people were thrown out of work um, in, the in the industrial sector because they were being slammed um, by imports, just as has happened in this country. So you had enormous hardship, enormous unemployment, enormous difficulty, but in downtown San Diego, it looked fantastic. Tell me if any of this sounds familiar. And that's when it was declared a miracle. It was declared a, an economic miracle, but it was all built on speculative finance. And in the early 80s, uh, Volcker upped the interest rates um, in the United States, and because the banks, with the private banks in Chile, which had been deregulated and were called the piranhas, had taken on so much debt because they were deregulated, that Pinochet, the great, you know, the, 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 the sort of poster boy of, in a way, of, of, for this ideology, because he was the first person to put it in practice, nationalized the banks because he had to. <laughs> Um, so, you know, this, this is repeated again and again, this, this pattern of boom and bail. And once again, this is, shows us that the, the ideology, the ideas, have never been that important. The, 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 the rules are broken all the time when it is in the interests of capital, when it's in the interests of the elites. Um, they're thrown out the window just as they're being th thrown out the window now, but they will come back. Um, so. One of the things that, um, that, that we see very clearly in recent, other, other recent crises, like the Asian financial crisis in 1998, the peso crisis in 1994, um, the spread of the Asian financial crisis to Russia in the late 90s, is that what happens during these, th these crises is that there is great intervention. On the international scale, it's the, it's, the, it's the International Monetary Fund that intervenes, taking direction from the US Treasury. Um, there, and eventually, it does have the desired result, which is so-called stabilization. But it's very important, and I think it's important for us to understand this in this moment, because now we're hearing all of this talk of whether there is a recovery. Um, now, I, I'm not going to hazard a guess. You know, I, I read very convincing evidence from smart economists that no, there's no recovery on the way. That um, this is that, that we haven't begun to deal with the actual liabilities in the financial sector. That may be, but it also may be that the financial sector does start to recover, and that what we'll see is what we saw during these previous crises, which is that these become moments of where a new normal is created, um, and. There is incredible stratification in the crisis. The most vulnerable people are the people who lose the most. The middle class is wiped out, but eventually it does stabilize. I mean, in Russia, 72 million people were thrown into poverty as part of their stabilization project. The economy stabilized, but those people didn't get their jobs back. In Asia, 24 million people were thrown into unemployment during the Asian financial crisis. That those, that they have never recovered their employment levels. So I think the question that we need to be asking ourselves in this moment is, what's the new normal after this, right? You know, I, 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 I kind of think, and I hate to say this publicly, that maybe Thomas Friedman was right, and the world really is flat, right? And we're gonna see kind of Brazil levels of inequality, Russian levels of inequality in the United States. Maybe that's what this shakedown will bring. So before we hope for the recovery, um, I think we need to look at that um, very closely. We have not re-regulated the financial sector. Do people understand this? Trillions of dollars have been put on the line for the banks. Okay, this is not just the $700 billion bailout, but the FDIC loan guarantees, the Federal Reserve loans, um, just the whole package. Bloomberg puts it more than $12 trillion has been put on the line, okay, in this bailout. And yet, in exchange for this historic level of funding, I call it the greatest heist in monetary history, no serious demands have been placed on the financial sector. It has not been re-regulated. The banks have not been broken up. On what planet do you wait until after you've handed out the money and the money has been spent to then go, oh, actually, there's a few things I'd like you to do. But can you imagine you go to a bank and you want a loan? 
They say you have to do this, you have to do that. You go to the International Monetary Fund, you want a loan, you're a country. Here's your structural adjustment program. But no, the U.S. Treasury hands the money out and says, I don't know, maybe in a year, a year and a half, a couple of years, we're going to impose new regulations. Um, so this, um, I think, should be taken at face value as evidence that there is no serious plan to regulate the financial sector, despite the fact that there is so much rhetoric about it. And it was really striking at the G20 summit that Sarkozy, who you know, six months ago was bragging that he would be Francis Margaret Thatcher, said he would walk away from the G20 table if, they, if, if these governments didn't get together and impose serious regulations on the global financial industry, which, which is what needs to happen. Because he's facing real pressure from below. It's May Day in France. Um, people are on the streets. And so you know, that kind of pressure has pushed Sarkozy from his position to that position. But he lost that because the U.S. was fighting that push, that push for regulation. So you know, what, what did they do instead of regulate the financial sector? They said they were going to give a trillion dollars to the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. They asked nothing of the International Monetary Fund in return for this, i.e. an examination of the way they mishandled previous crises, the fact that they have been systematically demanding that countries deregulate their banking systems and eliminate capital controls, which is precisely what makes them vulnerable to financial crisis. So once again, there's been the rhetoric, but there has not been the action. 